What's up guys? PC Amplified. This is the Amplified booking for the Great Balls of Fire pay-per-view. Sunday, July 9th. That's this Sunday, 2017. And uh, before I do get into it, I want to take just a couple of minutes to thank you guys so much for all the love, support, comments, thoughts and prayers that you guys have sent out for my stepfather who, as most of you know, um, on July 4th, uh, he was involved in a pretty bad, serious motorcycle accident. He's actually still in the hospital right now, but um, things are looking better. I'll put it that way. And uh, we, were, we were up there in New England for the last several days. Uh, we had to come back up to New York, or down, or just west anyway, <laughs> from New England. We had to go get over to New York to take care of um, quite a bit of business over the next 24 to 48 hours, and then we have to head right back over to New England most likely, or at least that's what I want to do. So I don't know what's really going to happen from here, guys. He's looking better, so we were able to get back to New York to take care of some business. Um, I would hope to do, my next video should be hopefully Monday, the good, the bad, and the ugly of Great Balls of Fire. That's what we usually do. But depending on this whole situation and how events unfold, I'm not sure if that's going to be possible. But I hope to be with you guys again on Monday. But that's looking ahead into the future. At least right now, um, I get to make this to you guys. I get to be back here in New York and and uh, make the Amplified booking, which was a goal of mine. And um, so I, I get to do that. But I did want to say thank you guys so much, man. I There is not one comment um, that I did not read that honestly fucking touched me to a T and you guys are just awesome. There was literally zero negative comments. You guys know I wouldn't allow that anyway. That's blocked immediately. Any trolls or trash, especially in a situation like this, that wouldn't even be read. But, um, so many fucking positive comments and, and it was so good to see, um, not just my amplified unit that comments uh, uh, all the time on my videos. You guys, you know, I love you. I always are, are am seeing those comments. And if I could type fast enough, I would reply to all you guys. But it was also people that I've never even seen comment uh, on any of my videos showing love and support. I mean, that's that's just all of us coming together. That's literally what the amplified unit is, man. It's an extended family. And that was badass. And I honestly believe it's all those thoughts, all those prayers. Um, and, and, and all that camaraderie, all of us come together that honestly lifts somebody to get better in such a tragic situation. So, um, again, bottom of my heart, uh, I, to all the way to the top. I thank you guys so much. He is getting better and that is awesome news, man. He's getting better and he's getting better fast. So we'll see, man. We're taking it day by day. And, and, and again, I might head back up there. So I don't know about next week's videos, but at least we got this and at least we get to do some amplified booking. So what do you say we get started? I want to start with Tazawa and Neville and the Cruiserweight Championship. All right. This is a match, guys, where they both have to come out swinging for the fences for what they are. They are cruiserweights. Go out there and act like it. And if McMahon is holding you down, well, now is the time to take the chains off. Because the cruiserweight division, as you guys know, I've said, is almost totally dead. Nobody cares about it. So nobody cares about Tazawa as much as maybe they should. Nobody cares about Neville definitely as much as they should. He's the champion. But they're not getting the responses that they know they can get and that WWE wants them to get. Or do they really want? I mean, sometimes I think WWE is sabotaging them, but that's another story. Here they have to go out swinging. This, these are the matches now heading into SummerSlam especially where the Cruiserweight division is, de is going to be defined. Is the Cruiserweight division actually something special or is the Cruiserweight division the bathroom break during the card every night on Monday Night Raw or the pay-per-view or at the live uh, event house shows? Now's the time that we have to establish this and it's not going to wait till SummerSlam. Great balls of fire. Tazawa and Neville go out there. These are two guys that can put on a high octane, high velocity, high flying kick-ass match if they allow them the time and if they allow them to do their move sets the way they know they can do it's that simple let them have a killer match and at the very end simple guys i would have titus o'neill go out there distract the referee apollo cruz comes out nails tozawa that's right the working relationship of tozawa and titus o'neill has has just not been working anyway let's be honest tozawa doesn't belong there he doesn't fit 
So if you can make Neville even more of a heel going into SummerSlam with that championship, this is what needs to be done. And you could actually make Apollo Crews relevant and actually a heel. Um, so Crews comes out, shocks everybody because he takes out Tazawa. And again, Tazawa was kind of on the fence anyway. Nobody really knew if he was totally heel with the Titus O'Neil brand or was he kind of still sort of face. But this kills all those birds with one stone because you go out there, you nail Tazawa, Neville gets the pin however which way he wants to do it, red arrow, whatever, and it's going to be Neville who ends up joining forces with the Titus brand. Why, guys? Because I want the Titus brand. It's now or never with him as well. It's just like the Cruiserweights. Are you something special or are you a dud? The Titus brand is 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 almost done, and, and you guys know that another two or three weeks of this on Raw, and it's a snooze fest. It's going to be over-the-top stale, and the problem with that is the Titus brand wasn't even that it wasn't over at all. What am I saying? It wasn't over, ever. So when something's not even over and it gets stale, that's pretty bad. And that's where the Titus brand is leading. So let's make it relevant. And if you put the Cruiserweight Champion into your brand and starting this Monday, you actually put them in backstage segments that looks Titus O'Neil, almost look like a Paul Heyman. Guys, I am not comparing him to Paul Heyman. Let's get that straight. Not comparing him. I'm saying if you put him in those type of situations, like he is a legit backer, like he is a legit promoter, um, manager, uh, everything, like Titus O'Neil can be relevant. That brand could be something cool, but they're not doing it right at all. So if you have Apollo Crews, he goes out there, does dirty on Tazawa. This will gain all that that hero welcoming to Tazawa. That'll bring that back, anything that he did have anyway, because Tazawa needs to be a face. He He's not good as a heel. And that will bring that all back once a Cruz just decks him and Neville gets the pin on him. People will be booing the shit out of Neville even more and Tazawa will look like the good guy. And you could you could make even Tazawa and Neville even string that out a little bit more too. I don't know if he would be the SummerSlam opponent, but if that's the case, then that's the route you would want to go anyway. Really build up that hero welcoming for Tazawa and really build up the heel heat for Neville joining Titus Brand and you would make him even much more of a heel. But... Tazawa getting decked by Apollo Crews is making Apollo Crews a lot more relevant. That's bringing up the Titus brand because you just had the Cruiserweight Champion join your, your regime. Everybody wins here. So a really kick-ass match in this Cruiserweight match is needed. I'm not asking for it. I'm not hoping for it. That's what has to happen. And at the end, a little bit of fucking trickery here where we have Crews not decking Neville, it's he's going to be decking Tazawa, Neville gets the upper hand, the one, two, three, and then Neville starts hugging Cruz and Titus, and now all of a sudden, the Cruiserweight champion is mixed in with the Titus brand. This kind of blurs the lines with the main roster and the Cruiserweight division, which is something I think that needs to happen, because that's what made the Cruiserweight division so popular in WCW, guys. It wasn't just a Cruiserweight division. They were always blurring the lines with the with the heavyweights in WCW, whether it was the guys like Nash or Goldberg coming out and taking them all out or what have you. They were blurring the lines, and cruiserweights were taking on heavyweights and this and that. You just blur the lines by having Sasha Banks on 205 Live, 205 Live for several weeks. So you blur the lines a little already. Why not keep that going a little bit? This could even lead to, lead to cruiserweights sometimes fighting against the heavyweights once in a while. But to have a cruiserweight in your regime, in your Titus brand, I think makes a lot of sense. And it blurs the lines between the cruiserweight division and the main roster, which again, only makes the cruiserweights more relevant. So that's a lot of information to take in, guys. All we really need to know is kick-ass match, Cruz decks Tazawa, Neville gets the win, Neville joins Titus brand, and hopefully starting Monday, Titus brand actually becomes a legitimate force in WWE that's actually entertaining kick ass and they could actually run with it that's what we're hoping for wow guys can you tell i, I haven't made one of these type of videos in in, in a few days man I, I wouldn't wait too long on a fucking cruiserweight match of all things all apologies uh this next match i'll go a lot quicker uh, because i went way too long on that last one uh enzo versus big Cass. this is a match that i have just enjoyed the build so much since their split i believe on june 19th and since then, we have just gotten an, such an awesome, heartfelt, emotional feud in just a few weeks. That's why I feel like this is one feud I want to see more from because this Sunday, it can't all just come to an end. I'm enjoying it way too much. That's why I feel these two go out there. Enzo gives it his all, right? His whole Rudy 
attaboy try. But it's Cass who's really beating the shit out of him. But Cass, you can tell, really doesn't care about winning the match. He takes it to the outside, starts beating around on Enzo, takes him up the ramp. And at the end, I want him power bombing Enzo straight off the top of the ramp into some tables, electrical equipment, whatever you want to have on the tables. But he just chucks him off the stage in a power bomb scenario. Enzo goes flying through tables. He's out. Cass is garnering all the heel heat. What this will do, guys, again. Draw that out. You could put that on SummerSlam for sure and put them in a specialty type match. Um, but I think I want to see so much more from them. And I want the beating to be so bad that you don't see Enzo for a couple of Monday Night Raws. Really play it out. And when Cass comes out in the next two Raws, he even takes the mic and he starts taunting like, look what happened to Enzo and this and that. And then on week three maybe for Raw, after Great Balls, Enzo comes back and he jumps Cass and it's a fucking brawl. Wrestlers breaking it up. And now we really start to kick in Enzo and Cass. I think this can only get better storyline-wise. So if you think we've seen the best of it already because we got the initial attack, some heartfelt promos, and that's it, nah, they can do so much more, man. They really do know each other better than anyone else. And I think if done correctly, this could be amazing. So I, this is one of those rare situations on a pay-per-view where I always preach you have to have conclusions at pay-per-views this is one of those things i would actually extend so you won't hear me say that often but with enzo and cast they both get basically a double count out will be the final decision but everyone is really going to remember cast chucking enzo from the ramp into a bunch of electrical tables and enzo is just out cold this will prolong that feud but i think that's the way to go for enzo and cast this sunday next the ic championship Dean Ambrose versus champion The Miz. Can somebody, hopefully, in WWE, creative, production, anybody, just go to Vince and say this has to end because we have seen The Miz and Dean Ambrose way too many times. I enjoyed it on SmackDown, but on Raw, it's just rehashed. They've had some good segments on Raw between the two, but most have been really bad. In fact, the first really horrible moments of the past couple of months of Raw, the, as far as like really epically bad moments, I can remember are actually Miz moments. Miz wearing the bear costume or Dean Ambrose wearing the the bear costume. Or how about another segment with uh, the, the Ball family, the Bell family, whatever that was. That was fucking tragic to watch. Uh, so they really have started to insert them in just like just horrendous storytelling it's time for these two to be over anyway because, again, this is a rehashed feud from SmackDown that nobody actually wanted to see. And I think you could have went a lot of other ways with Miz and a lot of other ways with Dean Ambrose. They decided to put them together again. All right, but this is something that cannot stretch out to SummerSlam. Because of that, guys, I have a kick-ass match here. I have Dean Ambrose looking really, really strong, and I have The Miz looking like a true heel, right? Much weaker. And I want Axel and Dallas to be right there doing their shenanigans as well. But Dean Ambrose overcomes them every time. Uh, but at the end, I want it to be Elias Sampson that comes down and costs Dean Ambrose this match. So even though Axel and Dallas do their shenanigans, it's going to be actually Elias Sampson that does the deed. No pun intended, because it won't be dirty deeds. It's going to be Elias Sampson, Big Boot, and Dean Ambrose. Miz is going to get the upper hand and the 1-2-3. A definitive loss for Dean Ambrose. A definitive win for the Miz. Again, because this is the way it has to be. You cannot drag this out anymore. Miz gets a definitive win finally. He heads out to the back. Elias Sampson is headed out. Axel Dallas, they're all going to the back. Dean Ambrose finally comes true. Dean Ambrose is pissed off. Dean Ambrose, now the story doesn't end here for Great Balls, right? Dean Ambrose is going to head up the ramp. He heads to the back. Cameras are going to follow him. This is where it gets fun, right? Ambrose is yelling to everybody, writers, anybody in a suit and tie, fellow wrestlers, referees, where is he? Where is he? As he goes through the whole hallways in the, in the back. And he finally comes to, I, I believe, maybe a writer or somebody points like, you know, around the corner because Ambrose is yelling, where is he? And so somebody tells him he's around the corner. Ambrose gets around the corner. There's a limousine waiting there. Maurice gets in, Miz is about to get in, but Dean Ambrose gets him. He has like a pipe that he finds or something, and he's putting it basically to his throat, to Miz's throat. And Miz is like, please, no, please, no. And Dean Ambrose says, where is he? 
So in other words, we find out that the where is he that Danny Ambrose is talking about was, was not The Miz because he has The Miz. He could easily take care of The Miz right there because The Miz was trying to escape in the limo. Maurice is already in it. And Dean Ambrose has a pipe to his throat like, where is he? And Miz, is, Miz pretty much narks him out. He rats him out, Elias Sampson. And he says, locker room. And Dean Ambrose actually lets Miz go because he's the least of his worries at that point. That will put a definitive end to this, guys. Because Dean Ambrose, yes, he's pissed at Miz, but now you get a sense that he is the he's not even on his radar right now. Fuck that championship. This has just gotten personal. And now Dean Ambrose heads over to the locker room. He finds Elias Sampson in the locker room. He starts jumping Elias Sampson. Wrestlers trying to break it up, but they can't do anything. There's a total beating between Ambrose and Sampson. I want this to be almost like that Macho Man Randy Savage, Hulk Hogan, uh, brawl that they had back in the training room. Remember with the medical staff? They were attending to Miss Elizabeth. And Macho didn't like that Hulk Hogan was standing over Miss Elizabeth. So they just started beating the shit out of each other in the medical room. I want it to just like that. Um, just in the locker room. I want things breaking, busting. Maybe even set up like a, a fake wall that somebody goes. I don't go what the fuck. I want them to brawl. I want a sense of reality in this. So when that segment is done, you really feel like The Miz is no longer in Dean Ambrose's radar. And this just got real between Ambrose and Samson. And I want it all done at Great Balls. So all this is going to be done within five minutes-ish. Because you're going to have Elias Samson cost Dean Ambrose that match. And then Dean Ambrose is going to be on the hunt for Elias Samson. And he actually finds him in that locker room. And there was a brawl second to none. That is amplified booking. I'm excited talking about it. Next, let's do the Tag Team Championships for Raw, right? Sheamus and Cesaro defending their championships against the Hardy Boys. It's a 30-minute Iron Man match. Oh, my goodness, man. If I could... Ha I, I would be here forever telling you guys how many matches I've witnessed that should have gone over fucking... Forget 25 minutes. Forget 20 minutes. Over 10 minutes, at least. And they just don't give anybody time. I mean, we just saw a women's historic ladder match at Money in the Bank... The first ever go 13 minutes and 20 seconds. But they'll give 30 minutes to Sheamus and Cesaro versus Hardys. A match that we've seen several times already. But uh, whatever, man. That's the way they want to go. Here's the deal, guys. I don't care how this match goes. I don't care how it ends except for one thing. Sheamus and Cesaro have to keep these championships. It makes the most sense. Everybody has. Everybody is telling me it makes the most sense if the Hardys get it back. BC, because where do you go from there? I mean, the only legit tag teams are the Revival and Gallows and Anderson, and they're both heel teams. So what are you going to do? Have heel versus heel, Sheamus Cesaro, SummerSlam? I think the Hardy Boys BC would be the best bet. Well, you're entitled to your own opinion, absolutely. But I would not go that route at all. Just putting mediocre feuds together because that's all you have on the roster is not good enough for me. The Hardy Boys do not need those tag titles. They're already the most fucking over tag team. Forget that shit. What I would do, guys, Sheamus and Cesaro win at, at Great Balls of Fire. Bottom line, again, I don't care. I'm not even going to overbook that. I don't care how it gets done. They win this match. But what I want to see at the end, and this will set up, I'm going to a little bit of advanced book here, like I usually do on these videos, but stick with me here. At the very end, I would love to see uh, Gallows and Anderson actually involved. So to do this, you might want to have a beatdown after the match of the Hardy Boys from Sheamus and Cesaro. Or maybe you even get the Revival involved somehow at the end of this match, and all four guys are beating down on the Hardy Boys. But either this Sunday or this Monday, I want the, the seeds to be planted for the face turn of Gallows and Anderson. I think these two are never going to get over unless you go risky and you go all in with them. I say they could be badass good guys. And you put them in there by putting all four guys. Uh, you got Seamus, Cesaro, and The Revival if you want to do that. Beating down on the Hardys and here come your saviors. And who are they? Gallows and Anderson? People are going to be like, what the fuck? But they're going to go in there and they're going to clean fucking house. And we're going to finally start to see how badass Gallows and Anderson are. Because it's obvious Vince does not take them seriously as legit bad guys. I don't know why. They're actually really good. And they got an awesome presence. So now we're going to go to like the Demolition or the Road Warriors. Remember Legion of Doom? They had that badass look. They'd be, you think, the perfect bad guys. But they were really good as good guys. Or at least they garnered a lot of cheers and applause. Because people love Demolition. People loved the Road Warriors, Legion of Doom. 
And I think Gallows and Anderson, again, I'm not comparing guys like Titus O'Neil and Paul Heyman. There's no comparison. Paul Heyman is his own fucking league. And I'm not comparing the Road Warriors and Demolition as far as talent or any of that. What I'm saying is they got a fucking badass presence and look, and they're actually decent in the ring. For this era of wrestling, that's the closest you can get to that Demolition and Legion of Doom type tag teams. And you have them going out as good guys, and you have them in a badass, kick-ass, realistic feud with Sheamus and Cesaro that they're, it's just brute for brute force. I mean, like, legit punches. I mean, these two teams will beat the shit out of each other, just like the Hardys and Sheamus and Cesaro do. I'm really looking forward to heel Gallows and Anderson versus... I'm so... Wow, man. I'm, I'm overlapping my own booking here. I'm looking forward to hero Gallows and Anderson, face Gallows and Anderson, versus heel Sheamus and Cesaro, pump that feud up to SummerSlam, where we finally see Gallows and Anderson at the height of their popularity, capturing those championships at SummerSlam. And you go into an awesome, badass feud with the Revival and the Hardy Boys. Because Monday, you could start the Hardy Boys coming out and calling out Sheamus and Cesaro because they don't think it's fair or whatever. And all of a sudden, the Revival comes out and attacks them. You could go so many ways. But two really kick-ass feuds for the future, to me anyway, would be the Hardys and the Revival. That intrigues me. And Sheamus and Cesaro versus Gallows and Anderson the right way and really pumping up Gallows and Anderson, dude, that seriously excites me. That seriously intrigues me. That's the way this needs to go down. I don't care how they do it, but this Sunday, the seeds have to be planted for Revival Hardys and Seamus Cesaro, Gallows and Anderson. And there has to be a turn with Gallows and Anderson. Because I promise you, at this point, you, you can mark my words, guys. Gallows and Anderson will not be relevant if they just stick around as heels. So now we go Seth Rollins, Bray Wyatt. I mean, this card is so stacked, I almost forgot about these two. And it's not just my fault, though, let's be honest. This has been one of the most lackluster builds in recent memory for two actual heavyweights, two legit superstars. Um, the, the build, the promos have not been there. I mean, yes, Enzo and Cass, their promos have pretty much been stealing the show. And then on top of that, you've been seeing what Samoa Joe and Lesnar have been doing on the show. I mean, obviously this was going to be you know, punted right down the card pretty significantly. But when they did have their chances, I don't feel that they really delivered uh, as they should have or could have, uh, especially in those promos, because what can you really do with Bray Wyatt? That's his bread and butter, but it's the same old lackluster promos that we've been seeing. That, that shit from Bray Wyatt's been getting stale. And for Seth Rollins, this feud has not been his most significant thing, right? It's been 2K18, I believe it's called, the video game. So... I don't know. The focus isn't really there, but it is two superstars. So, I, I mean, it's it's going to be pretty interesting to see what they come up with. In Amplified Booking, I have Bray Wyatt winning this match. I mean, you've already made him look like a complete joke on uh, 76 occasions, at least, that I can count of. Um, I see a little referee, you know, for a, just a brief second, not even getting knocked down. The referee just gets distracted for a second. A low blow, a Sister Abigail, maybe even two Sister Abigails for good measure. One, two, three, Seth Rollins gets beat. Bray Wyatt looks like, you know, his, the, what he calls the god of gods. And he's, maybe he grabs the microphone. He's about to cut a promo. All of a sudden, the lights go out, almost as if Bray Wyatt himself was about to appear. But there's a distortion up on the Tron. And when the distortion comes to, it's pitch black. But you see Demon Baylor appear. Just his face and all the paint. Eyes closed, but then he just opens them. Crowd is going to pop like fucking there's no tomorrow at that point because Demon Balor is the shit. And it's just his face now. Crowd's popping. Wyatt looks like he's going to piss his pants. And behind Balor, you can hear this real fucking just freaky ass voice go, run. And then it just goes straight to black. Bray Wyatt is fucking flipping at this point. Like, what the fuck does this mean? The crowd's like, oh shit, Demon Balor's coming back. And he's coming for you, Wyatt. I think that's a badass way to end this match, end this segment. So Wyatt gets the win. But right before he's about to cut a promo on how great he is, or maybe during the promo, we fade to black as if Bray Wyatt or his henchmen are coming down. But no, it's Demon Balor on the Tron. So the seed is planted. That... Demon Balor is coming back because Finn Balor, let's be honest, he's not being utilized at all at Great Balls of Fire and he's supposed to be one of your big talents. I think this is the great way to insert him in that because you could set up an awesome feud angle and storytelling between Demon Balor and Bray Wyatt 
I mean, the things you could do with those two, the sky's the limit. And I think you have enough weeks to build that towards SummerSlam. I say you started at Great Balls and let people at least remember who the hell Demon Balor really is. Women's Championship, and this is where BC Amplified totally flips the script because I have been calling for a Sasha Banks heel turn for I don't know how long. And it's becoming obvious and more and more evident that Vince just doesn't want to do what we think definitely needs to be done. Case in point, Roman Reigns, John Cena years ago even. Uh, and, and it's just where she would like to be, where she's more comfortable. But then again, she said she'd be more comfortable and would like to be on SmackDown, and they didn't do that for her either. So are we really going to get a Sasha Banks heel turn ever? It does not look that way. So let's go to the next best thing maybe, right? Like why try to beat on the same dead horse? And my Amplified booking, the way they booked this already was totally counterproductive to what I thought should have been done. So now you're having Alexa Bliss versus Sasha at Great Balls of Fire when I thought it should have been done at SummerSlam for the championship. But is now the time that we have Bailey come down to the ring and cost Sasha Banks this match a Bailey heel turn? They set it up perfectly, guys. I'm not saying this would have been my first choice. My first choice would have been Sasha Banks turning heel. But that's not how they set this whole thing up. They made Bailey look like the wuss of all wusses during that uh, kendo stick match. And she wouldn't even fucking use that thing. Then they looked, they, they did the hug segment with Graves. Like, she's just the biggest wuss of wusses, man. The, the, the nerdiest girl in the world. The nerdiest person in the world. Whatever you want to call it. And all of a sudden, she comes out and starts beating the shit out of Sasha Banks. Tell me that wouldn't be compelling TV, compelling pay-per-view action. Um, wow, would I be intrigued at that point. And that would set up... Bailey, Sasha, SummerSlam, which is what we've been wanting anyway. And then you can have what WWE wants to do, guys, in case you missed um, uh, my video a few videos ago on Weekend Update. They want to do Nia Jax versus Alexa Bliss at SummerSlam. Um, and it looks like they want to do that for the championship. Now, I want Sasha Banks walking out of SummerSlam with that championship. I still hold hope that they find a way to do like a little mini tournament or something. You get your Alexa and Nia which is what WWE wants to do. We get our Bailey and Sasha, but somehow the winner of those matches take on each other. And hopefully Sasha Banks can walk out with the championship. Again, I'm advanced booking and I'm wishful thinking. But as far as great balls, I do have, because of the way they booked this, the only thing that makes sense now is Bailey hits the ring like she's going to save Sasha. Maybe Nia comes down. Maybe somebody comes down there. And Alexa has the upper hand in an illegal way or in a cheating stance way. And all of a sudden, Bailey takes out Sasha Banks, and afterwards literally beats the hell out of Sasha Banks. That would be fucking, that would be a sight to see, man, because that would be a side of Bailey we've never seen. I'm going to put that in Amplified Booking. That's how I book this. Alexa Bliss keeps her championship via disqualification. All right, so I honestly, guys, thought we were going into Brock Lesnar, Samoa Joe. I, I, I fucking forgot about the ambulance match, one of the main matches, man. Roman Reigns... Braun Strowman ambulance match. This card is so fucking stacked. You guys realize this is the seventh match I'm about to go over. I'm about to go over the eighth and main event in a second. I mean, this is fucking, uh, this is a jacked SummerSlam-esque type of card, man. Enzo and Cass, uh, Alexa versus Sasha, even Seth Rollins and Bray Wyatt, who have had a horrible build, two superstars. Uh, ambulance match, Roman Reigns, Braun Strowman. I love seeing those two together. Then on top of that, you got fucking Brock Lesnar, Samoa Joe, what a fucking... Who would have thought a month and a half, two months ago, whenever it was, when, when it was discovered, that it was going to be called Great Balls of Fire? And we were all like, what the fuck? Nobody's watching this shit. We're just going to protest the fucking name alone. And now, all of a sudden, we're actually... This is, a, this is one of the most kick-ass, on paper anyways, one of the most kick-ass pay-per-views they put together in a long time. Anyway, let's get right to it. Ambulance match. I, it's Roman Reigns and Braun Strowman. I don't even have to sell this thing or amplify book this thing or overbook this thing. You just let them go out and be Roman Reigns and Braun Strowman. Against each other, they're always beating the fuck out of each other. They have so many injuries from them two going at each other. Just It's so realistic. It's so brutal. They just work well together. And they, they work stiff together. They throw bows. They're not afraid to just go at it. And I love watching them. And they're going to tear it up. Uh, this Sunday, and I want them going through tables. They're going to be going through everything. The whole freaking entranceway is going to be destroyed. This is where you guys are going to be like, no, BC, don't do it. I have a schmaz ending. I am sorry. I have a fucking hoop-de-doo ending that uh, 
it's an unfinished ending, but I think this is the way you have to go. It's, it's Braun Strowman's time to shine, so he can't lose. Roman Reigns has to do a lot of good things from here on out because he is developing slowly but surely this heel persona. So they both really can't do this big vicious loss. I have them literally, maybe it's like Braun on top of the ambulance for a power slam on Roman and he fucking, maybe not on the first attempt, maybe they try it a couple of times, but they literally go through the fucking roof of the ambulance. Or if they can't do it in a good realistic stunt way that you go through an ambulance, which I mean, these are two big, huge motherfuckers. If you do it several times, all that weight, that roof could crush in. We've seen it before, actually. The roof kind of crush in a little bit. I believe it was Ryback Cena, wasn't it? One of those ambulance matches. But these two, even bigger. You're talking over fucking 7 feet, 300 fucking pounds. That's not even including Roman Reigns. Uh, realistically, you could make it happen as a stunt anyway. And if that's not the case, you put them through the windshield or something. But you do something devastating where both... One didn't place the other in that ambulance. They both went through that motherfucker and viciously to the point where none of them make it out. And after several minutes of, of paramedics, everybody attending to both, it becomes evident they got to get to the fucking hospital themselves. So it's the officials and paramedics that are tapping that ambulance. And even with a shattered fucking roof or windshield, whatever it is, that ambulance starts driving off with both Reigns and Strowman because... They're fucking injured beyond repair. They got to get the fuck out. And so there's no winner. I know, man. It sucks. But it's still entertaining as all hell. Still believable in, in my booking, in my way of thinking. It's the best way to move forward with these two. Um, you could even, you could continue that. I mean, I would love to see them fucking continue. I really would, even through SummerSlam. I think Great Balls of Fire came way too quick with some of these matches. Strowman and Reigns I want to see more of. We already saw a lot of them before Strowman got injured, but I think we've only seen just a little piece of what they can do. And Brock Lesnar and Samoa Joe, I think there's so much more that we need to see from them. Great Balls of Fire just came like that. Some of these feuds were SummerSlam caliber, and I think it's only fitting if they extend to SummerSlam. It's not going to hurt the event because you're going to have a lot of awesome SmackDown first ever matches as well that are going to you know, make up for that. But we're going to want to see these rematches at SummerSlam anyway. I'm not saying you definitely have to do Roman and Strowman and keep it going. But I don't think there should be a definitive winner out of these two. Not in an ambulance match. Because there's no way to do it without the other one looking really weak. Um, and I think that's a badass ending. None of them make it out of that fucking ambulance. That shows you they just went through a fucking war. That's Strowman and that is... Roman Reigns, that's how I would do that one. And I'm going to go right into it because this video is so fucking long. Eight mega matches. And we're going into Great Balls of Fire. Uh, steam rolling, man. Sunday with a main event. Brock Lesnar defending his championship against Samoa Joe. Here's the thing. WWE is calling for a five-minute squash match. Brock Lesnar wins. I'm hoping they change their mind. Amplify booking. You ready? I'm going to shock you on this one. I'm going to make up for that uh, unfinished finish. From Strowman and Roman that I booked. And I am going to have Samoa Joe tap out Brock Lesnar. New Universal Champion this Sunday. Samoa Joe rocking the professional wrestling world. Now don't get your hopes up too high. The rematch would be over at SummerSlam. No, that, that means no Strowman versus Lesnar. No Roman versus Lesnar at SummerSlam. Nope, scratch them if you had those plans. I would have Samoa Joe, Brock Lesnar, the rematch. Brock gets his belt back at SummerSlam. It's only fitting because Brock has to do other things and bigger things with that championship. But what this would do for Samoa Joe, what this would do to this storyline, to this angle, and to this feud would be second to none, guys. We need to see so much more from Samoa Joe and Brock Lesnar because this is awesome between these two. No pun intended with the stupid this is awesome, but it is with these two. And we didn't get to see enough because Great Balls of Fire was just like that. And here it is this Sunday. And Samoa Joe is just hitting his stride. He's hitting awesome promos. The interaction between Lesnar and Samoa Joe is on point. I would, you know, it sucks if that just ends in a five-minute squash match this Sunday. Or if that match feud just ends. Even if they give him ten minutes and it's just the light, it's a one and done. That would suck. I don't think that's the way it should be. And I see Samoa Joe getting the best of Lesnar. Almost like a UFC tap out. When Brock Lesnar tapped out 
and in one of his first fights, and it just could be like shocking the WWE world. What did fucking Samoa Joe just tap out? It would be the talk. It would be the Monday morning cooler talk amongst everybody, man. Uh, anybody going to summer school, grown ups going to work, fucking shooting the shit at the basketball court. Everybody will be talking about Samoa Joe capturing that championship and not just capturing it, tapping out the fucking beast. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you guys the truth. My first amplified booking of this match was going to be Strowman taking out Roman Reigns in that ambulance match, being the decisive winner, and then Strowman, and then Lesnar taking out Joe, and Strowman comes down to the ring and takes out Lesnar to end the show. But I thought about it. I had a lot of time to think while I was up in New England um, at the hospital this week, and uh, I thought the best case scenario is nobody walks out of that ambulance match, and the best case scenario for that main event. Samoa Joe shocks the wrestling world. I think we need a fucking shock in the wrestling industry before SummerSlam approaches. And I think this would be it. This night belongs to Samoa Joe. And he finally gets his WWE Championship. The Universal Championship. That's Amplified Booking, guys. That's the whole show. In a nutshell, how would you guys book it? Don't be afraid to jot it down below. Um, love reading your guys' comments. And... As always, that's why they do the shows. We're going to see what WWE decides to put on this Sunday. I expect all the performers to go out there and kick ass. I expect them all to go out there and entertain us. But is it going to be something worth talking about after the show is off the air, Monday morning? Um, I honestly think it's going to be. The, the card is too stacked. The talent in there with who they're mixing it up with, it's too good. I think Great Balls of Fire is going to be fucking awesome i really do i know i usually i try to go into these things with no expectations they're high on this and i'm setting myself up maybe for failure here we'll see but we'll see what they decide to book you guys just found out how we would amplify book it and let's see who wins this let's see if wwe puts on a better show than i just put out there bc amplified Thank you guys so much again for all the thoughts, prayers, and love you have showed me, my family, my stepfather. And uh, I'm so glad I was able to get this video out. Hopefully I get to make the good, the bad, and the ugly Monday after Great Balls. And we'll see where we stand in the, in the pro wrestling world and especially WWE. Love you guys. I'll talk to you soon. We'll check you later.